Hello and welcome to this program of uh, network analysis. In this program, we will discuss uh, about AC network analysis. Up to now, we have examined each of the passive elements in the frequency domain on an individual basis. We now study the series combination of uh, these passive elements and find the voltage and current relationship for these uh, passive circuits element and also define the impedance for the AC circuits. Also in this program, we will begin to study a very interesting and important phenomena that occurs only in on those circuit which contains uh, both inductors and capacitors. This phenomena is known as resonance. So, in this program, we will talk about the resonance in series RLC circuits. Let us start with the sinusoidal response of series RL circuit. As uh, we can see in the figure, the inductor and resistors are connected in series with the AC source Vs. So, the current which is flowing from both component is same, but the voltage is divided in two parts. So, we get two component of voltage, one is the voltage across resistance that is Vr and another is the voltage across inductance that is Vl. The resultant voltage of these two component cannot be found mathematically since uh, the vectors V r and V l have the different phase relationship with the current. Here we can see that the V r is in phase with the current I and V l is leading the current by the 90 degree. So, there is a phase difference of 90 degree between the V r and V l. So, to find the resultant voltage that is equal to supply voltage, these two voltage component can be added vectorally by constructing the vector or the phase diagram. Here we will take uh, the current as a reference vector as uh, the current is same in both the component. So, uh, we can see in the figure the O B line represents uh, the current reference line, line O A is the voltage of the resistive component and which is in phase with the current, line O C shows the inductive voltage which is 90 degree leading the current. Therefore, it can be seen the current lags the voltage by the 90 degree. Then the line O D gives us the resultant or supply voltage across the circuit. Here we can see the voltage triangle can be derived by this diagram whose uh, uh, sides uh, are given by the V R, V L and the hypotonus uh, uh, that is the line O D represent the resultant voltage. By making this voltage triangle, we can use the Pythagoras theorem and we can find the magnitude of the source voltage as V is equal to under root V R square plus V L square. Also, we can find the phase difference between the total current and the source voltage by the equation theta is equal to 10 inverse V L upon R. We know that is V R is equal to I R and V L is equal to I X L. So, substituting this value in equation 1, we get the relationship between I and V as I is equal to V upon Z. In this AC circuit, this ratio is known as the impedance. So, if we divide the voltage triangle above by the current, we get a another triangle whose sides represents the resistance, reactance and impedance of the coil. So, this new triangle is called as impedance triangle. So, we can say that impedance Z of any series RL circuit is the total opposition to the sinusoidal current and it is uh, combined effect of resistance and inductive reactance of the circuit. It is a complex quantity. So, we can symbolically represent it as Z is equal to R plus J X where J represents the uh, phase 90 degree phase shift. Now, we can find the magnitude of the impedance by impedance triangle which is Z is equal to under root R square plus XL square and its unit is ohm. We also get the some phase relationship by the this triangle. 
So, we can conclude that in an AC analysis both R and XL are treated as a phasor quantities with XL appearing at a plus 90 degree angle with respect to the R. In case of the pure resistive circuit, the phase angle between voltage and current is 0. In case of a pure inductive circuit, the phase angle is 90 degree. But if we combine both resistance and inductor, the phase angle between resultant voltage and current is between 0 to 90 degree and here the voltage leads the current by the theta angle. Next we come to the sinusoidal response of RC circuit. Here uh, we can see that a resistance and the capacitors are connected in series with the AC uh, source V s. So, again the current is same in both the component, but we get two component of voltages which are V r and V c and V r is in phase with the current, but V c lacks the current by the 90 degree. So, again the voltages across capacitor and resistor are at 90 degree phase difference. If they are added as vector or phasor, we get the resultant voltage as shown in the figure. So, again we get a voltage triangle and the resultant voltage is the sum of two vectors V r plus V c. By the voltage triangle using uh, Pythagoras theorem, we can find the magnitude of the voltage as we have done in previously. Again substituting the value of V r and V c in terms of uh, current, we get uh, the relation between voltage and current and also the impedance of the circuit. Here the impedance of the circuit is the combination of resistance and the capacitive reactance. It can be represented as Z is equal to R minus J X C, where minus J represent the minus 90 degree phase shift. Here we can see in the figure in voltage triangle and impedance triangle that the angle between the resultant voltage and current is minus phi. So, this angle can be obtained as the ratio of 10 phi is equal to V c upon V r. So, we can conclude here that in the C r circuit, the voltage lacks the current by the phi angle and C r circuit causes a phase shift between voltage and current that depends on the relative values of the resistance and the capacitive reactance. Next we come to the sinusoidal response of series RLC circuit. In this circuit the resistance, inductance and the capacitors all three components are connected in series with the applied AC source voltage V s. Since all the components are in series thus the current is same for all the component in amplitude and in phase but the voltage is divided in three parts. So, we again get the three component of voltages which are V r, V l and V c. V r is the voltage across the resistance which is in phase with the current. V l is the voltage across the inductance which leads the current by the 90 degree and V c is the voltage across the capacitance which lacks the current by the 90 degree. So, we cannot find the resultant voltage by directly adding all three components. So, we have to make the vector or phasor diagram for all these three components by taking the current as a reference phasor. And to find the resultant voltage, the all individual phasor diagram can be combined. We will add the voltage phasors as vector we start out by adding the reactive voltages. This is easy because those phases are opposite in the direction. The resultant magnitude is the difference of the two and its direction is uh, depend on the larger one reactive component. So, 
to find the supply voltage Vs as the phasor sum of three component voltages combined together vectorially. So, here we can see that we combine all the three components and we get our voltage triangle whose hypotenuse represents the addition of vector Vr and the reactive voltages Vl minus Vc. Now, using the Ohm's law for the voltages, uh, we can get the magnitude of the supply voltage by the voltage triangle and substituting the values in the terms of current, we get that the supply voltage is proportional to the supply current. So, we can see that the amplitude of the source voltage is proportional to the amplitude to the current flowing through the circuit. This proportionality constant is called impedance of the circuit. So, we can uh, define the impedance of the circuit is the combined effect of resistance and both the capacitance. The unit of impedance is ohms and uh, we can make again the impedance triangle as we have done it previously. Sides of the impedance triangle represented by the resistance, the reactance X t, where X t is the total reactance which is uh, the difference of two reactants X l minus X c and the resultant impedance which is the combination of uh, resistance and reactances. So, the z can be represented as r plus j x l minus x c and the phase angle can be obtained as 10 inverse x l minus x c upon r. But the value of total reactance that is x l minus x c uh, can be changed as we know that the value of x l and uh, x c depends on the frequency. So, we can say that the impedance z of a series R L C circuit depends upon the angular frequency omega. If the capacitive reactance is greater than the inductive reactance that is x c is greater than x l, then the overall circuit reactance uh, becomes capacitive and giving us a lagging phase angle. If the x l is greater than x c, then the overall circuit reactance becomes inductive and we get circuit with the leading phase angle. And if the two reactants are same, then the reactance becomes cancel out. So, we can say the phase angle can be positive or negative depends on the frequency and determines the nature of the circuit. So, now we have to analyze uh, the circuit uh, by the varying the frequency uh, to evaluate the uh, circuit performance and uh, to begin this, uh, we consider the effect of varying frequency on each element. Thus, we can see as shown in figure 1 that inductive reactance is directly proportional to the uh, frequency. So, as the frequency increases, the value of x l is increases and the capacitive reactance is inversely proportional to the frequency. So, as the frequency increases, the capacitive reactance decreases. So, we can see for the lower frequency, the circuit uh, is capacitive and the phase angle will be negative and uh, for the higher values of frequency, the circuit becomes inductive and we have the positive value of phase angle. Thus, the phase angle changes from negative to positive value, but at a certain point, we get zero phase angle where the x l becomes equal to x c. The angular frequency at which this occur is known as the resonant frequency and this phenomena is known as the resonance. So, we can see that at the resonance when the x l is equal to x c, theta is 0 and the circuit becomes purely resistive as the reactive components are cancelled to each other. The angular frequency at which this occur is known as resonant frequency. So, now we will discuss the resonant phenomena in the series R L C circuit. The electrical resonance is defined as when the two reactants are opposite and equal. That means, x l 
becomes equal to x c. This situation is refers to as resonance, impedance of the circuit becomes purely resistive and voltage and current are in phase. To find the resonant frequency, uh, we can substitute the value of x l and x c and then uh, simply solving this equation. So, we get the expression for the resonant frequency that is f r is equal to 1 upon 2 pi under root l c. If l is in Henry and c is in Farad, we get the resonant frequency in the hertz. Now, if we study the frequency response of the circuit that is the variation in its behavior with the change in uh, signal frequency, we have to combine the frequency curve of each element. So, here we have combined the frequency curve in each element. So, we can say the impedance become minimum at the resonant frequency as x l cancel out the x c and we get the value of z is equal to r. At this point, the circuit becomes pure resistive and uh, the current and voltages are in phase. So, if we draw the curve between impedance and frequency, we get uh, the minimum value of impedance at the resonant frequency. Now, if the impedance is minimum, that means the current will be maximum at resonant uh, frequency. So, if we plot the frequency response curve for the current, we can see that we get the maximum value of current at the resonant frequency and the value of maximum current is given as V upon R that is the V upon Z minimum. So, we can conclude in the series RLC circuit at resonance, the resonance frequency correspond to the natural frequency of the oscillation of an LC circuit. The reactance of the circuit becomes 0. So, the circuit behave as a pure resistive circuit. Since V L is equal to V C, V is equal to V R, the current is in phase with the applied voltage and uh, at the maximum value of current, we get the maximum power which is given as p is equal to i square r. Now, we can see in the expression of resonant frequency, there is no term of uh, resistance that means, resonance occurs at the same frequency regardless of the value of r, but there is some effect on the resonance curve of the resistance value. This effect can be understood as that I maximum is inversely proportional to 1 upon R. So, as the value of R uh, increases, the value of maximum current is decreases. So, we can see that as the R decreases, the curve become uh, narrower and taller and the value of I maximum increases. So, we can see here that the for lower value of uh, r, we get the sharper curve and as the value of r increases, the curve becomes blunt. Theoretically, if r is equal to 0, that is the in the ideal condition, the current be infinite at resonance, but the uh, this cannot be possible as the real circuit always have some resistance. So, we can see by the frequency response curve of current that the sharpness of the curve depends on the value of r. So, we get another term sharpness of the curve in the resonance curve, the frequency response of the circuit current relates to the sharpness of the resonance. The sharpness of the response curve could be measured quantitatively by a quality factor Q. The quality factor Q is defined as the ratio of the reactive power to the average power of the register at resonance or it can be defined as Q is equal to voltage across L or C divided by applied voltage. So, we get Q is equal to V L upon V R, thus the quality factor is given as 1 upon R under root L by C by substituting the value of uh, resonant frequency. We know for a given circuit, the L and C are constant. So, Q is inversely proportional to the 1 upon R. So, we can see here 
that the sharpness of the curve is again related by the value of resistance. The high Q circuit responds only to a narrow range and the narrow peak of frequencies that is the high sharpness. For the high value of Q, the series resonance circuit becomes function of uh, only resonant frequency. This type of circuit is also known as the acceptor circuit because at resonance the impedance of the circuit is its minimum. So, it easily accepts the current whose frequency is equal to the resonant frequency. So, in the figure we can see it gives the output only for the very narrower frequency range. This frequency range where we get the fruitful output is known as the bandwidth, but in the for the low Q circuit we get the much broader range of frequency. So, here we have to define a another uh, quantity that is the bandwidth. Bandwidth can be defined as the frequency range where we get the half power of the maximum power. At half power of its maximum value at resonance, we produce two frequency points called the half power points. The lower frequency point is known as lower cutoff frequency and upper uh, frequency point is known as the upper cutoff frequency. The narrowness of the bandwidth is determined by the quality factor as Q is equal to the resonant frequency divided by bandwidth. So, we can see Q is uh, inversely proportional to the bandwidth. These uh, half power points can be obtained by the current response also at the half power point the current becomes 0 0.707 of its maximum value. So, bandwidth can be defined as the difference between the two half power point frequencies that is f h minus f l in hertz. Half power frequencies is the frequency when the magnitude of output voltage or current is decreases by the factor of 1 by root 2 or 0 0.707 from its maximum value. The bandwidth is the range of frequencies over which at least half of the maximum power and current is provided. Now, we can uh, see the relation between the Q factor and bandwidth as shown in the figure. Here we can see that higher value of Q, we get the smaller value of bandwidth. So, we get the higher selectivity and the lower value of Q, we get the larger bandwidth that is the lower selectivity. These resonance circuits are uh, mostly used in the application of radio receiving circuit and the filters. Thus, in this program, we analyze the series RL, RC and RLC circuit and we uh, find the relation between voltage and current for them. Then we become familiar the frequency response of the series resonance circuit and we calculate the resonant frequency for it. Also, we understand the impact of the quality factor on the frequency response of the series resonance circuit. I hope you must have enjoyed this lecture, thank you.